Then it goes on in verse 4. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. So when we think of ourselves in sober judgment, if we think of ourselves in not being more highly than we ought, that's when we work together and come together as a body of Christ. And he's telling us there, this is what he's saying. He goes, listen, when we, when we come to that understanding, we understand that you are a member of the body of Christ. Therefore, you have your own part. You have your own job. You have your own function. Because as a body of Christ, we can't do it without you. Because it says so right here. But why can't we do it without you? Because part of the body still thinks of themselves higher than they ought. Some of the body still thinks that that's, uh, doing certain things are below me or, or it's not above my stature or whatever the case may be. It's like, listen, we can't think of ourselves that way. We have to be willing to be the body of Christ, to worship Him. Verse 6. We have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it is serving, then serve. If it is teaching, then teach. If it is to encourage, then give encouragement. If it is giving, then give generously. If it is to lead, do it diligently. If it is to show mercy, do it cheerfully. Why? Because of verse 9. Because your love must be sincere. We, yeah, we, we know when someone loves us sincerely. We know when someone is just going through the motions. We know all those things. We know when you love sincerely, it's coming from the heart. We learned a few weeks ago on Sunday evening when we were in, where were we? Were we in First Peter? And then we talked about loving from the heart deeply. And that's how we're supposed to be with one another. So it says, love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Love must be sincere. Help me do it. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Woo! Don't get tired. Don't get tired. You know when you're done serving the Lord? When you're no longer here. Until then, you serve the Lord. Until then, you keep going. Yeah, but I've been doing this for 70 years. Who cares? Serve the Lord. Do it. Yeah, but. No yeah, buts. Yeah, buts don't come out of our mouths. Serve the Lord. Then it goes on. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, prayerful or faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Huh. Of, of those that we just read in verse 12 and 13, how are you doing? Are you joyful? Are you patient? Are you faithful in your prayers? Are you sharing with people in need? Do you practice hospitality? Huh. Well, look at verse 14. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Ah, oh, live in harmony. Because we all don't see eye to eye, but we all need to live together in harmony. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of who? 
everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Huh. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not overcome, uh, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Why? Because of our relationship that we have with Jesus, our relationship that we have with God. Because once you go through this process of surrendering and honoring and living for him every single day, every single way, you're going to see how great he is to us. You will find that out.
Father God, we come before you and we honor you and we glorify you and praise your name and glorify who you are because of what you have done on the cross for us, because of how great you are and you know that we needed a Savior and you sent your Son to die on the cross for us. And because of that, we know and realize there is nothing but the blood, the saving power of Jesus, and we praise his name. In Jesus' name we pray. Nothing but the blood of Jesus And what can make me whole again Nothing but the blood of Jesus And oh, precious is the flow That makes me white what he has done for us and there's nothing but the blood there's nothing that's going to happen before us that we know that he's taking our sins away from us we we get to start life over again we get to have that refreshingness that that purge of everything that pulled us away from him so that we just need to fall down and glorify him and accept him as our lord and savior we need to fall down before him and realize he is the king of kings and the lord of lords
when you go from knowing who he is and what he has done, you can't help but love him. My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. For thee, all the follies of sin I resign. My gracious Redeemer, my Savior art thou. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, tis him every single day in every single way not only will he transform us personally but he'll transform us as a congregation when we put aside ourselves and put him first life church fellowship family changes hoping that's what we got hoping that's what we were singing just worshiping him and praising him. Let's stand for our closing prayer. Father, we come before your throne. Where, where else would we rather be? We, we don't we want to be anywhere else but before your throne, just to, to glorify you and to honor you and to bless you and to praise your name. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for all that you've done for us. Thank you for blessing us. Thank you for sending your son Jesus who died on the cross for us because without that, without that relationship that we have with him, without that relationship and knowing that he has transformed us and forgiven us and, and given us a new hope, it tell, he tells us how we need to live as a body and how we can honor each other and to glorify each other. And I'm asking, Father, that you please have your Holy Spirit move through every single one of us. Move through us, Spirit, so that you reveal to us things that we probably have <laughs> buried so deep inside of us that we don't want to admit, that we don't want to do, that we don't want to change, and that you uh, convict us and help us to change so that we could 
to be united and, and, and comforted and loved and, and doing what you want us to do instead of what we want to. So, Father, continue to guide and protect us. Thank you for this body. Thank you for the individual parts. And may we all work together to glorify you. But, Father, show us what we need to do to glorify you first. To put you first. To honor you. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for us. It's in your name that we pray. Amen.